Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me for our Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I am your host, Dr. Angela Butchester. You guys know what I like to do on my show. Say it with me. I want to enlighten, inspire, and empower you to become your best self. Now, Scripture reminds us that the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on a fire. And that's what we want to do today. We want to get you fired up about my guest. I'll be spending time with Shirley Green today, and we'll be talking about her book, In the Spirit of Life, Volume 1 and 2. So go on, get comfy, get cozy, get your coffee, or get your tea, because we are about to get started. Hello, Shirley. Thank you so much for joining me here on Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. Hello. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Now, as is tradition around here, we always give our guests an opportunity to introduce themselves um, to perhaps those few folks out there that may not be familiar with you. So first question is, tell us a little bit about yourself. What makes you, you? What makes me, me is one, I'm a Southern girl from Charleston, South Carolina, originally. Um, blessed with many gifts and talents. I'm a people person. And with the gift of writing, I also used to encourage. So uh, part of that is being loving life and loving people and doing what I can to help empower them. That's one of my motivating, uh, my motivating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, being an author, is that something that you've always wanted to do, or did you find that this was um, just one of the proper mediums in order to share uh, your information and your wisdom? Well, actually, um, coming along, I learned it along the way that it was actually a gift. Uh, And as far back as I can remember, I wrote. And as a child and growing up in Carolina, I lived in church practically with the AME Church and the gifts that we had been given. I'm a, one of eight, and God blessed each of us with a creative gift, and one of mine was writing and speaking and drama. So I've been writing since I was a child, and I'd be asked to write pieces for a particular programs, special events, Women's Day, for children, and so it was in me the entire time. I guess at this point, God just brought it out to the point of bringing out the book. Mm-hmm. Now, the title of your book, In the Spirit of Life, Volume 1 and 2, how did you come about the title? Why was it appropriate to give it this name? Well, In the Spirit of Life, was given to me as I wrote it, it's because basically there is uh, on the cover of the book a kind of symbolic explanation that everything is embodied in the spirit, which we as people of God understand is that God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And the beginning was the word, and all of that comes out of the spirit and the word, and everything is enveloped in it. So in the spirit of life, Everything we do is in that spirit, so it is not segregated to the church or to a particular religion. We are embodied in his spirit, and his spirit rules. So everything that happens in life happens in that spirit. So that's where the title came from, in the spirit of life, from every aspect of life. It's embodied in the spirit, whether we acknowledge it or not. It is still under the auspices of the Spirit of God. Hmm. Oh, I like that answer. I I really do. Now, for for someone who um, is interested in the book, I I always ask this question because uh, many times folks are going, I want to get a copy of the book, or I want to gift a copy of the book to someone. I am the type of person who gives books as gifts. I I think that we can never uh, read too much. We can always take a moment to uh, empower ourselves, to uh, enlighten ourselves. With that being said, do you feel that your book is appropriate for someone high school age, or should they be college age and older? So 14 to 18, is that okay, or do they need a little bit more life experience? No, 14 to 18 is fine. Actually, I've had even younger, and one of the things that I've been blessed to do is when even doing book parties, 
people who have gotten the book have just felt uh, impressed or compelled to call me to tell me about the book. And the reason I raised that is because one person who is also a radio personality uh, got my book and she was in a session ahead of me and she raised the book because her 13-year-old daughter had read the book and she called to say, I can't, I need another copy because I can't get it back from my 13 year old daughter. She said, but I'm really telling you because we had not spoken, my 13 year old and I had not spoken properly to each other in over two years. And she came into the kitchen with the book open to a particular page and she was in tears. And she said, mommy, can we talk? She said, if your book does that for my 13 year old, I'm telling everybody on my show that they need to get a copy of your book. So that's why I say, she said her daughter was 13, and um, there are other teenagers, 12, 13, have taken my book to school to do projects from pieces in the book. So, yes, it's appropriate for 13-year-olds, uh, and even younger, there are pieces in there. There's something in there for everybody. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I find that more and more people are giving... Uh, credit, if you will, to not only our high schoolers, but our junior high or middle schoolers um, that have really great not only communication skills, but they have a really great relationship with with their parents or with an aunt or uncle, and they're able to uh, articulate what's going on in their world, right? When they need help or when they've been uh, gifted something that it has helped them uh, see the light or understand what's going on, and I think that is something really to be praised in that young person. And that they were they were able to um, have that moment and to share that moment. So you're never you're never too young um, to to be able to uh, make a difference in someone else's life. Because of her comment, it inspired that conversation to be had. And now here we are, radio sharing, and someone else might be able to uh, help their um, their uh, high schooler or middle schooler as well. I love it. I love it. That is awesome. You never know what someone's going to say with a question. So I love it. I love it. <laughs> no, but that particularly touched my heart because uh, yeah, she had her own show. Uh, and we were on, we were built on the same program and she was ahead of me and she said, I know people don't generally do this. She said, somebody's coming after me to be up here, but I need to share what her book did for my daughter. And we have not spoken in two years and a piece in this woman's book opened the door for my daughter and I to talk. She said, I was in the kitchen cooking and my daughter came in with the book with tears running down her face and after two years said, mommy, can we talk? So she said, if she could do that for my 13-year-old daughter, I think too, you need to get the book. She's like, and also, I can't get my book back from her. She keeps it. <laughs> so, <and that's> <laughs> she said, yeah, she can keep it. <laughs> <laughs> so she was saying she needed another copy because her daughter wouldn't give it back. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which I guess that could be that could be a good thing. It's like I I understand. It's like okay, we'll give you a pass on this one. I love it. I love it. <laughs> but you know, I I find that I have been, um, I, like I said, I give books as gifts. I have received books as gifts. And one of the things that I have noticed is within my circle of friends, uh, we are avid readers. We understand that that many times the epiphany that is waiting to happen in your life, that aha moment that that you're trying to get to, uh, many times you find it after reading a book, right? In in your quiet place, you're able to take in that information, process it, and go, oh my goodness, the answer is right there. It's been there all this time. And you find it in reading the book. Not knocking podcast or any of the other things. God bless the podcast. Yes, I'm there too. So, you know, it's like, but at the same time, I have found that in exchanging a book, um, that we have really been able to share some secrets that have given people that extra key to unlock the door that, that they have, that they've been struggling with or been trying to piece together. So I love it. Now, when it comes to the proper way to read your book, I realize that many times an author will help us along on the journey, if you will. They may suggest that we read the book like a devotional, where, you know, you read a few pages, put it down, and then the next day read an, another few pages and, and continue on with that. Others will say, Dr. Angela, my book is a reader's choice. Just open the book, read where you may, read all, read a few. It doesn't matter. You'll know where to start and where to stop. 
Other authors have said, um, I put it in chapters or sections for a reason, start with the, the first piece before moving on to the second piece, so on and so forth. Um, can you tell us what is the most correct way uh, to read your book so that they can really uh, glean as much from it as they possibly can? Mine would be the option B that you mentioned. Um, there is no particular order. Uh, as I said, there's something in there for everyone. And there are, it covers a number of various topics. So, again, in the spirit of life, I believe also when you give books, because I'm a gifter as well, I've gifted my books to many people, and it's my belief that uh, nothing in God just happens. So whoever I gave the book to, I, there's no instructions for how to read it because I believe that the Spirit of God will lead you to what you need. And you got the book for a reason, whether you bought it from me or whether I gifted it to you. That book is in your life for a reason. And you'll be guided to what it is that God wants you to see, what God wants you to hear. And whether you start in the middle of the book or you see a piece there from the table of context where the title piques your interest and you go there. But again, from my position, is even if it piqued your interest, that wasn't an accident. So that's what drew you to that particular piece. And if you were drawn to that particular piece, there's something there for you. And God will reveal that to you when you read it. So uh, there are, it does not come with instructions, <laughs> except that in the foreword, I do say that don't go in the book looking for perfect grammar. Because if there is not perfect grammar, it's intentional that the grammar is not perfect. Because we don't speak in measured forms. It is written to, to in the spirit of life, as people share and people are emotional. There are people who are not well versed, people who are not uh, formally educated, but there's power in what they give. There's power in what they say, whether it's said with excellent grammar or whether it's said in broken English. The, if whatever they have said is profound, it will hit. And sometimes the things we remember most are those things that are not gram, not said grammatically correctly. But the profoundness of the meaning remains with us. And that's the whole point. So, um, nope, no instruction. You pick it up and you read wherever you want. If you want to start at the back, you want to start at the front. Because, again, you'll be led to whatever it is that is meant for you to get out of the book because the book was given to me by God and he's already know he already knows who's going to receive it and what he intends for them to get and that's my belief. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, c- I could not agree with you more there. Uh, I think that as long as we follow the instruction given to us by God, right? That when the Holy Spirit prompts us to write, to do, to whatever it is, to, to stop, to go, to speak up, to be silent, whatever it is, that when we do that, then the people who need to receive it will be there to receive it in the perfect time in which they need to receive it, and it will be there. And that is such the uh, a beauty, in my opinion, uh, of a book. It doesn't matter when it was written, it is it is gifted to the future as well, not just to the present, but to those in the future. Because we read books right now from, you know, uh, this book was written in 1929, and we're still, you know, saying, this is the greatest book ever written, you know? So, uh, and especially those that are that are out there in, um, like, in the business world and all of that, it's like, my goodness, we're still... Uh, taking note of what, you know, Mr. Ford said do because it still works. So why wouldn't something that is inspired by God to be written as well continue to work even into this day? So I love it. I love it. Your, from your book to God's Holy Scripture, we are, we are getting what we need and, and I love that. Love that. Shirley, it is time for us to go to a break. But before we do, can you remind everyone, please, what is the title of your book? Where can we get a copy? And, of course, how do we stay in contact with you? The name of the book is In the Spirit of Life, Volumes 1 and 2, which are in the same book. And the book can be found. It's available at Amazon or wherever books are sold. And to reach me, you can reach me at Shirley Services at yahoo.com. 
you can also get the book at a I love it. All righty, everyone. Now you know where you can get a copy of the book. We'll be back right after this. And we are back. Thank you so much for joining me for a Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. My guest today is Shirley Green, and we're talking about her book, In the Spirit of Life, Volume 1 and 2. Now, let me ask you about uh, a, a little bit more about the book. Now, here's where I give my disclaimer and my radio folks. You guys know what I'm going to say. If you want to know how the story ends, you got to buy the book. Now, with that being said, I want to ask you, can you tell us a little bit more uh, about your book, of course, without giving it all away? Okay. Well, the book actually is a collection of poetry, lyrics, and inspirational writings. It covers uh, a varied, various topics, including it opens with a child's prayer. Uh, my background is in social work, so a lot of the work, a lot of the works are out of the experiences from doing social work. There are pieces in there, in particular, to men and to women. There's a piece called "Where Are the Men." And another piece that deals with romance in terms of, and so you want to love me. Um, so there are a number of things, and of course there are pieces there that specifically zero in on what the Word of God teaches us and different aspects of how the Christian life and living and walking through the Christian life. And that's not always where we are spitting out Scripture or the fact that it shows Christian people go through the same things other people do, but it's just that we have the help from the Holy Spirit and that we make the same kind of sometimes judgments that other people do, but we have the foundation in God in order to walk through it and make it through it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You are, you are so, you are so right there. Um, I, I think that, um, the, our aspirations to get it right helps uh keep us on the path right because we're human just like everyone else and and you're so right sometimes we we don't get it right but but knowing that um that god is there for us and that we're able to get back on track is is such a a comfort in in knowing that and i think that's why faith is, is such a big part for for so many people is that there is that that redemptive quality of i didn't get it right but i can keep trying to get it right so i, I love that now when it comes to who the book is for, I know that sometimes an author will have a particular reader in mind. It may be for mothers or for those that are grieving, uh, those who have aspirations of opening a business, whatever whatever the, the, the niche may be. With that being said, do you have a particular person that you're speaking to with with your work here? Well, basically, well, as I alluded to before, it speaks to every age, every group. There are pieces in there for seniors. And there are pieces in there for children. Uh, there are pieces in there relative to what we consider current topic, but in my opinion, they have been the topics forever. It's just that either they're highlighted now, uh, point in case, uh, there are two pieces in there called The Unborn, which deals with abortion. Uh, one is the the unborn from the mom's eye view, and there's the unborn from the baby's eye view. So there are pieces in terms of just laughter and finding strength in who we are. There are things there for women who are dealing with how they look. Uh, there, there are things there for mothers, so it covers the gamut. There's something there for everybody and in different topics. So again, and they pick up the book. And there's a piece that draws draws it to them. It won't be by accident, but by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I definitely, I definitely believe believe that. Now, would you? I, I want to ask: Would you consider your book to be a secular book or a spiritual book? But I, but I want to ask it a different way, um, or with a different understanding. Do you have to be a person of faith? Do you have to be saved in order to read your book? Can you just be? human number next and still be able to to gather something from your book absolutely uh you don't have to be a christian to get something out of the book because again the pieces are from life 
And again, even as Christians, we don't always get it right. We make decisions sometimes that people who are not Christians make. And we may even get flack from people who are Christians and say, why did you do that? It's to say that the only supreme and perfect being is God. And because he loves us that much, even when we make those errors, when we make those bad judgment calls, when we make the, we get pressured and we do something that we've done without consulting the Holy Spirit, that His Spirit is there to raise us up. So, no, you don't have to be a Christian, but I believe that when you do read it, that it will touch that place that touches all of us, whether we are saved or not. It will touch that place, and then God will do the work, whether you're a Christian or not. If there's something there for you, even if you're not saved and you picked up that book and you picked up that piece, or in my position is God's timing is perfect. And so even for Christians, you may have read something, even in the Word of God, 20 years. And this one day that you read that same scripture you've been reading for 20 years, it hits a part of your spirit because it was time and your spirit was ready to receive what that word was giving and it's I believe it's the same way with this book anybody can pick up the book and get something out of it I've gifted it to people who are not saved and some of them have become saved as a result or the Lord through his will spoke to their heart through pieces in this book so no it's for everybody you don't have to be saved you can find something in here mm-hmm. that touches you mm-hmm. and, and like you said you prayer make... that it will mm-hmm. And like you said, you you never know um, how how your work can be utilized to get someone to that stage, right? Um, many times we we hear of stories where people will share that uh, you know my mother tried to get me to go to church, my grandmother tried to get me to go to church, or whatever. My friends were trying to get me to go to church, but lo and behold, it was my school bus driver that mm-hmm. that finally convinced me because they said a something or they they shared a something, and it it was that. That really was the the bridge or the catalyst between uh, where they were and where they needed to be. So you never know, like you said, how how that's going to work. So I'm glad to know that this can be uh, utilized in that way as well. Uh, what a what a beautiful gift that would be. Now, when you were in the the writing process, and I know that every author has their own time frame. Um, some believe that they have a deadline of a particular day, and they will write until they do it. I've also spoken with some authors that say, Dr. Angela, this book took me 15 years to write because I didn't know I was writing a book. Um, I've had some that said, you know, it's taken me five years because I was trying to write a book, um, but I just didn't have the time. So I was, I was trying to make it happen while life was going on. It over, um, it took a number of years because I wasn't really writing a book. Each of, at the time that I was writing the pieces that were there, I've written it for special events, or as I said, I was asked to write something for a particular event or a particular person or on a particular topic, or just to present and speak, and as speaker for different events, I wrote things, and some of them were poetic, some of them were in speeches, so it's been a number of years, and I purposely left those from my early writings there because I also wanted to send the message to those who might be uh, thinking about doing it to go ahead and just write it and God will bring it together in his perfect timing or as someone has said to me I'm trying to write this book and I don't know where to start my message to them was just write it and at the, the right time God will bring it to you because when I wrote it, it wasn't to be a bestseller. It was it was to get it out of me. Because if God has put the book in you, you're going to have to give an account of your stewardship over what God has placed in you. Because if he's placed it in you, he already knows where it's going to go. You don't need to concern yourself with that. Your job is to get it out. If he put it in you, he already has designated who it's going to go to. But your job is to get it out. And so my sense of that was I finally put it together, but it's been, it was a number of years. Um, these collections come from over a span of years and finally compiled and put together in the book when, again, in the perfect timing of my life, when I needed to do it, when God opened that door to give me that space to just focus on getting it done in the book. So... um 
over time and in God's perfect timing. But when I started writing the pieces that are there, it was not with the mindset to write a book. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And see, that's why that's why I ask those questions, because there's someone out there right now that that's trying to decide, do I make this a book? Do I not make it a book? What is this really? Is this a novel? Is this a workbook? Is this a seminar? You know, what what is this? And trying to figure out what it is. And I think in, in hearing from authors that have gone down a similar road, uh, the one thing that I find to to be the common denominator is is that for many, the intention was never to write a book. The end result is a book, and those who have purchased it are happy. But you did decide to put it, you know, in, in the format of, of a book to be shared with, with the rest of the world. And it's like, like you said, if, if God gave it to you, your job is to put it out there, not to, to worry about all the other stuff, but to just do your part, and that is to get the word out there. And boy, does does that make a difference. I love it. I love it. Now, uh, we have about a minute left uh, in in the show, but I want to ask you this one last question, and that is, if there is one um, overall message that you want for your readers to, to gather from having read your book, what is that overall message? The overall message is that you are in good hands in the spirit of life and to live in that spirit there are no there's no end game until it ends and he has the last word trust him put it out there and he will determine where it and you will go so the message is in the spirit of life things will happen but you can overcome them if you remain true to who you are and you hold on to the spirit of life which embodies all of us which is the spirit of god Amen and amen to that. I love it. I love it. Well, Shirley Green, thank you so much for spending time with me here today on Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. Before I let you go, though, can you remind everyone one last time, what is the title of your book? Where can we get a copy? And if someone wants to reach out to you, what's the best way to do that? Okay. And again, the book is In the Spirit of Life. Volumes 1 and 2 in the same book, and you, it is available at Amazon or wherever books are sold. And you can reach out to me at Shirley Services at Yahoo.com or through the publisher, Exebliss.com. Thank you again for being a guest on the show today. Thank you so much for having me and for sharing. Absolutely, absolutely. And listeners, thank you for spending time with us here today as well. You could have been anywhere, but you chose to spend it with me today, and I thank you for doing so. I hope that we have enlightened, inspired, and empowered you again today. As always, may the Lord continue to shine His face upon you. May you receive His grace and His mercy in all that you do. Until next time, everyone, remember that you, you are blessed in the Lord. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.